Hello and welcome to a new video of Idle Monsters Tower Defense Evolved. This video is going to be a beginner's guide about what is the game all about, what you can do and how you should approach it. Small disclaimer of course, this is how I play it. Um, it doesn't mean that you should play it like this. Um, everybody has his own playstyle. I like, like to farm. Um, before I push um, so yeah don't think this this is like the holy bible for it um, just learn some stuff and adapt it to your own ways so uh, of course it's a tower defense game as you can see I have towers here let's check out the towers there's four types of towers you have the DPS kind of towers with the sword here you have the um, supports, you have the debuff and specials. Your DPS towers, obviously, um, they are used to do DPS. It's no rocket science, of course. Your support towers, they basically support your other towers, obviously. It's no rocket science, for example, hair gives 30% uh, damage and 6% attack speed. Of course, from Evolution uh, 11. Evolution 11 is the highest level. Uh, well, it's not the highest level. It's the highest level for your stats. If you go to Evolution tab, you can see that all of the skills are maxed, except for Gold Drop and Damage. When you go beyond level Evolution 11, you can still get more damage and you can still get more Gold Drops. Um, your Debuff Pets, for example, Debuff Pets, what do they do? These have skills like Slow, Weaken, Stun, Confuse. Those basically give a debuff to all of the enemies around. You can put them on boss only. Um, you can do the same for your tower damage as well. Put them on boss only. Uh, so whatever you prefer. And then there's special towers. Special towers are my most favorite towers. Um, these guys have skills beyond insane so th these guys have like experience boost gold boost um, energy source energy auras for example energy auras so whenever an enemy dies within his range there's a chance to give energy I'll explain what energy is later but that's awesome experience aura um, and so on and so on um, as you can see for example if we get to sting scroll down there's a card bonus as well so for every hundred for every card pack that you complete you get a hundred percent damage bonus so I get completed packs uh, nine so my DPS bonus is 900% we for example go to my dragon uh, I have 20 packs so it gives 2000% um, of course the card packs do increase in order to complete one um, if you go back to my map, then you can basically see that I'm only killing the enemies with my dragon here. So my dragon is shooting at them and none of the other towers are doing anything. How is that? Let's click on my sword bridge. There you go. If you go to targeting, there's some targeting options. For enemy targeting, for this in the maze and stuff like that. Do whatever you feel like, do whatever you feel like is best. Maybe you can come up with a new setup. Um, something out of the box you can have them focus bosses this is something you probably want to do on um, your DPS and you can put them on skill support skill support basically means your towers are gonna do zero damage but you're still your skills are still applying so the experience boost is still applying the energy source is applying and all of the gold dust as well there we go it's a nice um, double XP Um, so yeah, that's for towers. If we click on towers again, um, oh yeah, card packs, sorry, I forgot about card packs. If you go to new towers, you can buy all kinds of card packs. Um, you can buy premium packs as well. I wouldn't recommend buying them with gems. You can do much better stuff with gems. Um, so yeah, this is how basically how you buy cards. If we click on uh, a tower, you can have pets as well. 
So, as you can see, I already maxed all of my DPS pets. The first pet becomes available at level 5 from the dragon. So, if the dragon is level 5, for example, you unlock this pet. At level 10, you unlock this one, then this one, and then this one at 20. So, each 5 pets. Um, I'm gonna go to another one. That might be a bit better. There we go. So, um, pets do not level with experience. So, a pet is basically upgraded by getting kills with this pet or the master. So, whenever a pet kills something or whenever the master kills something, um, your, your bar basically gets increased. I can't call it experience because it's not experience. Your pet kills basically get increased. Um, so, yeah. Every single uh, type of tower. So, for example, if I go to my Snake Naga, I have different kinds of pets. But if I would go to, for example, uh, Blossom, I would still have the same pets because it's support. And they're also the same level, of course, which is really nice. As you can see, my Blossom is uh, Evolution 20, which has Petal unlocked. So I can assign this to Petal, for example. But if I go back to Snake Naga. I don't have Petal Unlocked because my Snake Naga is not level 20. When it becomes available, then I can. Um, when my Snake Naga is level 20, then I can obviously use it. And that's about it for your towers, basically, and the pets that come with it. Um, let's talk about all of the enemies. If you go to settings, you can also put your game speed on slow. Uh, or on fast. As you can see, you can also click an enemy. That would basically mean focus him. For example, if there's a boss, you could say focus on the boss, and all of the experience boost basically could go to it. Obviously, you can have your uh, your special tower set set your stuff on boss only, and you can have a uh, focus attack on boss. So whenever a boss comes in range, it will basically focus him. Um, what kind of enemies are there? When are when do bosses spawn? Uh, bosses spawn basically every fifth and tenth wave. You can also do boss boss rush, which will go from the tenth wave to the fifth wave to the tenth wave to the fifth wave, as you can see right here. Seventy, then it's seventy-five. There we go. Bosses are the guys with the red HP bar, and in between there are rest howlers. Um, if I pronounce that correct. So every third and every eighth wave, there's a mini boss as well. Um, but doing boss rush just overall gets more experience. That's why basically people do it. What other enemies are there? Uh, peasant mobs. Peasant mobs are smaller mobs, same mobs uh, as regular mobs. Uh, but their gold drop has been increased by X amount of percent. This might not be the same for you because you can get upgrades to increase this. Also, the timer uh, can be increased by getting upgrades later on. Then there's the uh, tank swordsman. I recommend not spawning him when he's off cooldown. It's very tempting, it's very tempting because it drops a lot of gold, but only do it during tournaments. I'll explain later what tournaments are, but try to only do it during tournaments. Why? Because once you kill him, his HP increases. Once you kill him again, his HP increases again, and again, and again, and again, until he becomes almost unkillable. You can get some HP reductions, but um, it's pretty costly. Um, so I would only recommend him killing him on uh, tournament days. Oh yeah, once in a while, there's some ads here. Um, click them, get a boost. It's really awesome. Next enemy, the Necromancer. He's famous for dropping tech points. At first, there might be a number one here, and I can go all the way up to 41. Um, my recommendations would be don't kill him at all. Don't kill him uh, under 30 tech points. Like, just kill him when you have 30 tech points available or more. The more, the merrier, basically. His HP goes up as well, and he becomes 
really unkillable as well at some point. You can use debuff pads and you can uh, get HP reductions, but yeah, I would I would definitely recommend just like waiting till you have all of the upgrades to kill it. That's so much more beneficial. Um, and that's it for enemies that we have. As you can see, I have some nice spells on my spell bar. If we go to the upgrade book, the first step is spells. We have combat spells, buff spells, and resource spells. Resource spells are probably something you should invest in like early on. Um, as you can see, you can unlock autocast for, for all of the spells. I didn't do it for combat spells. I did do it for buff spells. I don't think I should have. Um, so you can wait with those. But your resource spells just should do it. Um, these are one of the most amazing things. Um, as you can see, Wreck to Riches is on boss waves only. Mastership is on boss wave only. Um, basically because every time a boss comes, these should be activated. You don't want your uh, experience boost to be activated on like wave uh, one or two because you'll get less experience because bosses give more gold and experience. Your power source and time warp, that doesn't matter because at every enemy they hit um, basically gets, um, well, you get energy from it and your time warp will, will your game speed will go faster. Game speed is key in this game. Just telling you already, game speed is key. Oh look, I passed the mobs already. Let's spawn them. Yeah, I'm going to slow the game speed. As you can see, there's the little blue guys, but yeah. Game speed is key, killing them fast, getting fast experience. Good tip. Let's go to artifacts. Whoa, all the way up. Artifacts, every 10th wave, every 10th highest wave, basically, gets you an artifact. For example, my maximum wave is, let me check, uh, 4,296, that means at wave 4,300 I get a new artifact. Artifacts are unlocked by waves, so first you have these available, at a certain wave these become available, etc. etc. And at, in the end this tier gets available. This is available at the uh, wave 2000. A good tip is when you've just reached wave 2000, basically unlock all your artifacts and then do a reroll because you won't have any artifacts in here and when you reroll you will have them here because they get randomized throughout all your cards upgrades uh, all your artifact upgrades and that's pretty amazing because I've seen people getting like 9 jackpots and 9 damages at wave 3000 that's insane that's a huge damage boost for you that's it's really incredible so yeah that's a very good tip there Research! Um, research is obtained with energy, as you can see here in the top right corner, the blue uh, lightning. Lightning is obtained from, uh, well, energy is obtained from all, all kinds of sources. So when you kill a res hauler, which is the mini boss at wave 3 and 8, or a regular boss, you get uh, extra energy. Um, There's also skills from towers. So for example, if I go to my phantom, I click on general and you can see energy source. This attack marks an enemy to give plus four energy when killed. So whenever an enemy comes here, you can see the um, blue bar around him. When he goes off, it basically means that he tagged an enemy and used his skills. So um, I think this guy has energy aura as well. So energy aura is a bit different from source. Source is when you attack someone. Aura is basically whenever the enemy dies within range of this tower. And that gives you basically energy. Uh, what else gives you energy? Like one of those um, active play things gives you energy based on your highest wave. Killing the tank gives you energy. Do not recommend doing this for just energy. Uh, that would kind of be a waste. Uh, what's good here, damage is good, prestige points is good, enemy HP reduction, critical hit, gold, I wouldn't go for it, uh, range of course, uh, how could I miss this, range is also key, um, 
The skill cooldown is boss damage, boss gold, game speed. Game speed, game speed is key. Remember that. That's like one of the go to things. I wouldn't do a gold drop because leveling up your towers will give you a lot more gold these days than just like. I mean, yeah, I can't really compare a level 21. Uh, let's see. I do have something here. Oh, yeah, training dummy, for example, which is level 8. Um, if I would evolve this, I would get like 70 more gold. If I would have to upgrade this for 70 more gold, uh, that's gonna cost me a lot. So I wouldn't recommend investing in it early on. Um, I wouldn't recommend investing in it end game either, but yeah, okay. I hope you get my drift. Um, prestige points. So every time you go to your highest wave and you can't continue anymore, you have this little icon here that says ready. If you click it, you can basically prestige. You can choose a map of your likings and then prestige and then you get to get the prestige points. Um, and that, that's basically how you get prestige points, that's it. As you can see in, for example, research, you can get an increase uh, prestige points earned by, for example, 20,000% if you have 2,000 upgrades in it. There's um, other places where you can upgrade it as well. But yeah, you can choose out of different maps. Each map has different perks, which are really nice. If I can give you some tips on this one, uh, early game for farming, Enchanted Forest. It's probably the best choice for you. Um, if you want to do a push, like a tournament push, or you want to push for a higher wave, I would go for Eerie Cemetery. Also, end game. Um, end game and early game, Eerie Cemetery is really good. Uh, I've seen people do double DPS on uh, Eerie Cemetery as well. And Desert is more for end game. When you've reached your maximum range of 10 meters and 0. Uh, 0 0.08 I believe um, all your towers basically reach everything as you can see for example here if I go to my shadow you can see uh, it reaches everything you can also click on a tower go to targeting and then see its range so it should be 10.08 um, and that's it for prestige um, what you invested I mean, it's, it's not much choice here, you just have to invest in everything, except for gold. Well, you can do some gold here, it doesn't matter because you, you'll get a lot of prestige points in the end. And then there's temporary boost as well. So every time you prestige, this changes. So when you're doing a good tournament push, you want uh, damage, gold drop, critical hit damage, critical hit boost here, and then uh, try to maximize those. That's why people always uh, save some prestige points for tournaments as well. Because as you can see, I can easily upgrade this, but I'm basically saving my uh, prestige points to have temporary boosts in my tournament later on. Then there's a tech tree. The tech tree is basically um, the points that you get from your necromancer here. So let's go back to the tech tree. What should you get here? I mean, you should get everything. Tech tree is amazing. But end game, you really, really want your 30 plus tech points from your necromancer before you start doing this, because it costs a lot, and the necromancer only gets stronger. Um, what do you want? You want your range at first, because range is key. Uh, when you go down, you get repeated cards, which is also nice. You're gonna have to put like a point in everything to get this one here as well. Uh, I would go for cards in deck. That's that's like the main thing you should go for instantly as well, besides range. That would increase your cards in your deck here. I think it's from 25 to 250 basically. Um, so yeah, would recommend, but only end game, of course. Um, tourney points. Oh, look at that. Free energy. Um, tourney points, I'll explain the tournament first, which is here. Let's go to info. Uh, the PvP tournament is basically a race to the highest wave against other players uh, in your bracket. How are brackets defined? How are brackets defined? If you go to the FAQ, um, your highest wave puts you in a certain bracket. So, for example, 
my highest wave is 4,200 uh, and whatever. That puts me in bracket 12. So I'll be competing against all the people who are between 4,000 and 5,000. We go to ranked. Hey, you can see me here. Uh, yeah, this guy is popping off against me. Like, yeah, there's not much that I can do, but it's still nice because the price is still amazing. The higher you go, the better price you get. So even if you join and, and you basically suck or you can't do anything, you're still going to get tournament points. Uh, not as much as in Breath of 12, of course, in the beginning. As you can see, these are the maximum points. But all the things add up. And that's what you want. You, you just have to join. It's every Wednesday and Sunday, uh, beginning at midnight UCT time, and lasts for a full day. So yeah, and that's basically how you get tournament points. Um, what should you max here? You should start with a few points in damage because that will really bump up your damage which will make you push faster uh, prestige point is really awesome as well uh, and then in tier 2 th this is amazing tier 2 the game speed spell cooldown spell duration everything that is going to help you long term that's what you want to invest in so game speed spell cooldown spell duration that's really nice boss energy here in tier 3 if you have this unlocked or if you want to unlock it it's amazing as well because your energy you're gonna do a lot with energy and you're gonna need a lot of energy. Um, as you can see there's tech points here as well. I would not instantly go for tech points here. Um, you should get a few but not too many. But it's totally up to you depending on your playstyle and how you want to play. Um, I'm happy with my 37, I'm not gonna 37 tech points if I kill the Necromancer. I'm not going to invest more in this anytime soon. So, but that's my place there. You have the store with the bundles. Uh, it's a one time purchase. You don't need it. Um, there's plenty of free to play players out there who are like really high as well. Um, the only thing in here that you need is the game speed times two. You can actually buy it with gems um, 500 gems that you can just mark up. So, you don't actually need to buy it with your money. Uh, this is the first thing that you should totally buy with your gems. This literally the first thing. In the gem shop, uh, you have uh, resource packs and gem upgrades. This totally depends on your playstyle as well. Um, what I would go for is game speed, tech points, tournament points, boss energy. Those are all nice. Depending on your playstyle, if you already have a high drop, uh, gold drop, uh, would not instantly go for this. Um, you can get some kill XP. Kill XP is nice. Um, get around. So basically, you, you have like in missions, my stats and uh, resources. You can see kill XP. If this says 250, then you should start uh, investing in kill XP percentage. Because then that's going to be beneficial compared to kill XP. That's basically what you want to do. Um, yeah, you invest in this when you feel like you need more experience, uh, higher experience drops. Um, you basically have to feel whatever you want to invest in. Some people go for tournament points first, some people go for tech point first. Um, it's totally up to your playstyle. Missions, uh, achievements. Achievements are basically like any other game, um, sort of missions that you have to do to a certain point get 40 unique towers uh, have so many evolutions uh, use so many spells it's, it's no work science basically then let's head over to daily missions uh, these will be randomized every single day and for every single player so I do not get the same uh, daily missions as you would do for example on the same day uh, an important note is here the tank swordsman spawn and necromancer spawn. You might get these early on and not on a tournament day for example. It doesn't matter. Um, just do a prestige, don't put your towers yet and just spawn them. It says spawn, it doesn't say kill. Big tip, if you don't have enough 
um, tech points. But, well, if you don't get enough tech points for your necromancer, just spawn him, but don't kill him. Spawn him and don't kill him. Get the daily mission done and get your gems from your daily missions. My stats, uh, it's just a tab where you can see your uh, current run gains, combat stats, overall combat damage, um, all your other stats, and your minigame, your active play bonus DPS. Each time you click it five times, you get plus 10%. It's also nice. Let's click on rank. These are just leaderboards. Hey, this is me, top 10 again. Yay. Bizarre. Um, Total waves, total evolutions, enemies killed, energy earned. Ooh, almost a plan. Um, these are just leaderboards, these are just for fun. Hidden compartment, if you click on customize, <gasps> you can get active bonuses. You can change your icon basically. Um, you can buy these with gold uh, to increase your DPS. You can buy these gold icons basically with uh, energy. And you can buy game speed icons with gems that you can farm. These boosts are always active, so you don't actually have to click on one of these things to, to activate it. These are always active. Um, in the titles tab, it's basically the same, just uh, with titles. You have some cool show off titles like Pet Master, train all four pets of a single type to level 10. You have a perfect tank, which is not easy to get. Archmage takes a while. Um, champion finish uh, PvP tournament in first place. Um, on the upper right corner, there will always be like your daily events, uh, your daily claim, and sometimes there's an event like now. Uh, it's two times kill XP. That's why I'm getting so much experience, by the way, not because I get this much experience all the time. These are random. Um, the we basically never have an idea when they're gonna come so uh well mostly a day or two days before the event happens there will always be like um a gray event icon here and you can click it and it will say coming soon um settings it's just background music sound effects um game speed on and off uh putting game speed off and pushing and using your spells is really helpful as well um the FAQ, read through it, it's awesome. Um, and then the updates. Updates are always nice. If there's a new update, you can read whatever um, it's biz, if you pronounce it like that. Uh, basically fixed or implemented. Um, it's really awesome, you can see here. Increased artifact gold percentage from 1% to 2%, which is really nice. Um, so yeah. Another uh, important thing is the loadout. And that's the last thing that I'm going to show you. Uh, you can have multiple loadouts ready. For example, this is my farming loadout. So whenever I would do like a prestige, if I would click this, nothing would be set. I would just click on loadout and I would click on load. Uh, clicking on save would mean if I were to basically change this from the location, I would save put these two can save put them back, save, that's how it works. No rocket science, pretty easy. So you can see I have a farm energy and experience set, I have a gold farm set, and I have a DPS set. You have the same with spells as well. These are basically my farming spells and these are my combat spells. Um, that's about it, basically, for the guide. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something. Um, the ideal setup, that's always a good question. There's no, there's not really an ideal setup. Every player plays their game different. Um, but I would advise reading through your uh, skills of your towers. For example, Wind Mage and the Shadow have a time combo skill, which basically increases game speed by 10% for each active special tower within range of this tower. That's why these eight towers here, this guy, this guy, and all these up are special towers because as I said before, if you go to resource, game speed is key. Um, what's a good DPS to level? That's also a good question. Uh, how do I push to get the dragon? How do I push higher? 
It's also a good question. Um, there's no written rules of what tower you should use to level. People go from Sting to Dog Bow Wow to Werewolf or to Soul Mage and to Werewolf and then go to Dragon. Some people go from Sting to Dragon. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, do what feels good. If you would ask me, I would actually say use special towers. I mean, I'm using special towers now and I'm endgame, if you can see my DPS. Uh, I did not use that many DPS. I don't think I've actually used Werewolf. Um, but I am using special towers. Pixie 26, Phantom 27, Poison Bomb, Dog Bow Wow, Soul Mage, Shadow, Death Mage, Wind Mage, Brave. They're all high level because I'm still using them. Um, they're special for a reason. No, just kidding. No, they are special for a reason. Um, a lot of them actually have time boosts as well, like increased game speed. And as I said, game speed is key. And not only game speed, but energy sources, energy gain, experience sources. Um, I, would, I would advise you probably to level a special tower first to as your main DPS in order to reach the dragon. Because in the end, you're going to use special towers anyway. So. That would be my advice. Then again, do what you like. A lot of people use werewolf as well. Um, do whatever feels right for you. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something. And see you guys next time.